saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us, seated us, seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, not so that no one can boast, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you for your word, Lord. Bless it accordingly. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. If I hadn't released kids, they're gone. Bingo, maybe. I probably, in all of these, I, I, I saw where a particular church in Birmingham, the largest church in Birmingham, I really one of the largest in the nation, they were celebrating this past, well, they celebrated somewhere on YouTube, and I saw it, it was like uh, 140,000 people have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and I was like, praise God for that, I really do, praise God. I pray that in our efforts, and even as a church, one of the things that I really, my heart goes out to is that we find that we are those agents of not only revival, but agents of the message that God has called us to proclaim. If you've experienced Jesus Christ, if you've experienced this grace that we see here in Ephesians, the second chapter, it says, because of his great love for us, who he's rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ Jesus. That step right there should be the invoking and the inviting and everything else that goes with wanting to share what has happened in your life and wanting to share what's going on in your life. And so as I see that passage of Scripture, I am so grateful for the mercy that God has given us. We did not deserve it. We still do not deserve the new mercies every day because God is rich in his mercy and his steadfast love and mercies are renewed every day towards us. But he has given us this power because of what we've experienced. If you've experienced the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you've experienced something that is very unique just to human beings first and foremost and very unique to those who are probably in the minority of this world. You say minority because Jesus says there's wide is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is a path that leads to the gate of eternal life. And so we can see that there's going to be, and I, was, I always joke because you can see the, I think Neil has it down there at the Neil's Pharmacy and talking about the highway to, I mean the stairwell to heaven and highway to hell and you see where the value of traffic is going to be. And so I, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of true in a sense. And you find yourself looking at what God has done and why he has saved you. I titled this thing Servant Witness, and what I believe in this is that God has equipped each person in here uniquely with your giftings for the purpose of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone in here is not going to be the same personality, and that's a good thing because I would get tired of myself if I was around myself all the time. And uh, sometimes I do get tired of myself. Sometimes others get tired of myself. And you find yourself, don't say amen, no amens. Those have to be around me all the time. But I do find that God uniquely puts each one of us in, and, and, and not everybody is going to be, and I pick on Debbie a good bit, not everybody's going to be as expressive as Debbie DeVore. Whenever you're around Debbie and you're talking to her, if she's got freshly manicured fingers that are orange, it duck, you duck. You're kind of like, and then you find yourself. Not everybody's going to be like that. Not everybody's going to be a, the Ron Parker. Not everybody's going to be like every one of us sitting here, every one of us has got unique giftings in your life. And God has uniquely placed you in this world and uniquely placed your salvation. But here's what he has done. The message is the same that he's put in each one of us. It's just the package is a little bit different. One of the great things I have is I got a friend named Greg. Greg Frost, he's sitting on the back row. Now, what I have found about Greg is the, the fun thing about Greg is we're totally different in a lot of ways. But it is fun hanging out with him. But you know even what's even greater than that? He has every tool I need that I don't have. He actually grew up being a mechanic, and he has got, you can't imagine the tools he has. I'll, I mean, I don't, I don't really have to go to Advanced Auto. They have this tool rent thing. You can go and rent a tool. If you don't have it, you can actually rent a tool that can take off just about anything on your car. I can call Greg. Greg, I need this tool. I got that. Greg, it's, it's a special. I got it. No big deal. And you know, the great thing about having a friend like Greg, he is uniquely designed, and he even knows how to use them. I don't mean to throw him under the bus this morning, Greg, but you know how that goes. He, he's got all these tools, and he, I got tools that I don't even know how to use. And I'm embarrassed to say that, but 
just because they're tools and Tim the tool man Taylor goes rrr, 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 more tools but here's the great thing that God has put in each one of us a unique ability with design tools that he has placed in our life each person is gifted to do good works each person in here you're gifted to do good work I, I read through that passage of scripture and you get to the 10th verse is really where I'm concentrating here because he has given us because of his imperable great riches it says for his grace you've been saved it's through faith not of yourselves you didn't do anything to receive this package but what God did is he put the redemption package in you and you are a unique tool chest for God and it is not something that every one of us is going to do the same not everybody is comfortable I'm comfortable when the elevator's doors shut it is a contained group of people that I get to talk to. There's nothing more fun than if you find somebody that's kind of looking at their shoes and you can start talking to them. Or when they say, you know, I always ask them, are you going up? And they say, yeah. And I say, well, I hope you are. <laughs> you can break up conversation all kind of ways. And they say, I, you know, you can make sure you're going up even when these doors close. And so you find yourself, and that's just me. I'm not asking everybody to be me, but I can tell you this, that God has made you rich in his mercy, placed his message in you, and you are that unique toolbox. Not everybody's got the same tools. Greg Frost has more tools than I can imagine having. He, his daddy was a mechanic, and he got handed down tools. And I can't imagine having as many tools he got. But he got mechanic tools that are just mechanic tools. They're not for novices like me. But there is things that I believe every one of us have that unique gifting God has placed in your life. Not every one of us is going to be the same. And when I talk about being that servant evangelist, it says we are God's workmanship. Let me just use that. We are God's tool chest. His workmanship. We are what God has created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now, don't get me mixed up here because God has saved us, empowered us. And you heard that right there before that. You are not saved by your works nor are you going to be saved by your works. You're only saved by the work of Jesus Christ and what he's done in your life. There's nothing that you can do to save your own soul. The only thing you can do is believe by what Christ has done upon the cross for us. That's the only way you can be saved. No other way. And it's by faith that it's not by your works. Jehovah's Witness thinks if they can go out and pass out enough watchtowers or do this or do that, or even the Mormons, they think they can do, go out and ride enough bicycles and do your thing and have this. And there are other people that have all kinds of reasons why that they think they can be saved. Or you can be like the fellow that was in the church in Tennessee that was a better, he was more faithful to going to church than most people in that church, and he was not even saved. I promise you, that guy went to church. He was there every Sunday. And the only reason he didn't get saved is because his mother-in-law would stand up every Sunday and point to the back row and says, there are two ways. There's one way that's going to lead you to heaven. There's one way going to lead you to hell. And she'd turn around and point at him. <laughs> but he'd come to church every Sunday, faithfully. We're saved only by his grace, by his mercy. When you receive God's mercy, he gives you grace, the power unto salvation. That is his power he grants to you. Places it as you're his workmanship, you're his toolbox to share the good news of Jesus Christ of what he has done. Each one of us, I look at Carol on the back row back there, and Carol is uniquely designed. There's a joy in Carol. You get around Carol, she just laughs. She just has a good, there's something about Carol that's just different. And she just enjoys life. You know, you can't play, you won't beat her on a tennis court. Maybe you will, maybe, I doubt it. But you won't beat her. But she has a unique giftings about her. I look at my little Seth man over there, and, and you know, we were talking yesterday, the funny thing about it, he said, we have Avery, Ethan and Seth. We call them E, Avery, and Seth Man. Why we do that, I don't know, because Seth Man has the shortest name, and we put in a longer name. Well, everybody else has long names that go short. We were talking about that on the way home. I don't know why we do that, but we do that. And I look at the uniqueness that is upon his life, the uniqueness upon Jamie's life. Every person in here has been saved under the purposes of God in that unique tool chest. And so we're saved by his mercy to do good works. Now, here's a passage that I never have really like but it is in scripture and I have to go with it because it's one of those things in Matthew the 25th chapter when we start talking about doing good works now we will be at some point be judged how we use this tool chest how are we in this tool chest used now a lot of people will use this Matthew the 25th chapter when he talks about the sheep and the goat they use this passage, this is where you get what we call the social gospel, the one where you got to give the, the drink of water, you got to clothe the naked, you got to visit them in prison, and we get the social gospel without the message. Listen, folks, it is, and I don't know if y'all have had the caramel M&Ms, they're good, but that's a package deal. 
You know, I don't want just that hard shell. I like those caramel, and you put them in your mouth, and you crunch them up together. Good stuff. And I'm not advertising for it right here. But I had some other night, and I was like, I got to stop this. I'll be as addicted as they come. But you find yourself that it's a package deal. Everything that about our life, we have been placed, the gospel message has been placed in this uniquely designed tool chest, the workmanship of God, in order to do good works. Now, Jesus in this passage of Scripture here in Matthew 25, he gives a parable about this. When the Son of Man comes, he says he'll gather them all together. he puts the sheep in the goat. He puts the sheep in, on his right hand, the goats on his left. When the king comes, he says on the right, he says, come, you are blessed of my Father to take your inheritance. The kingdom was prepared for you you since the creation of the world for i was hungry you gave me something to, to eat i was thirsty you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in i needed clothes you clothed me i was sick and you looked after me i was in prison and you came to visit me the righteous will answer him lord when did we see you hungry we'll feed you or thirsty and give you drink something to drink when did we see you a stranger and invite you in needing clothes and clothe you when you when did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king replied, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for the least of these brothers, you did for me. Now, he goes on and says the opposite of that to the goats. And he also tells them, he said, you're going to be separated. You're going to be separated eternally. But let me, let me tell you this. And the reason I say I don't really like this passage, I do like it. But the reason I say it is because a lot of people want to do the works thing. They say, if you'll do these things, you can be saved. Folks, this is what we should be doing because we've been redeemed. Now, it's not an either or. It's not a social gospel versus this. I've talked to a lot of my liberal brothers who are social gospel liberal sisters who say, you just give them a drink of water, but you don't tell them why because you don't want to offend anybody. Well, folks, I want to offend the Hades out of people. I want to get out of them. I want them to understand that heaven is the road that we should be walking towards. I also want them to understand this in our lives that, yes, we give a drink of water. We do give of the natural things. If somebody needs a coat and they're sitting there and you're wanting to talk to them and you're fully coat and you got your socks on and everything on and your mittens on and you're wanting to tell them about Jesus, take your coat off and give them that coat. But continue to talk to them about Jesus. There are things about this, and I see in this passage of Scripture, because we will be judged on what we do, but I think we'll be judged on how we use this tool chest, what God gave us. What he has uniquely placed in your life. Some of you can bake the best banana pudding in all the world. You could open up people's lives to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ with that banana pudding. Think about it. You will me. You can save my soul if you want to. But here's what I want you to understand. There's some unique things. And you say, well, what does a cake matter when somebody moves into your neighborhood? It matters a lot because that opens a door and says, here, I want you to know that you got a neighbor that loves you and cares for you. Those are things we look at and we say, well, do they really matter? Now, every one of us can't bake a cake. I can bake a pound cake. Get amen, thank you. I can bake a pound cake, and, and it takes a while, but I can get her done. And you find yourself, if you were to take that pound cake to somebody and say, look, I just want you to know that I'm here as a friend, I'm here as your neighbor, and this is it. That's a nice work to have, but then I need to follow that up also and make sure I know that they know Jesus. Because a pound cake is going to get them fat. There's a lot of butter and sugar in that, and I love it. But what I do find, I want them to know that their soul can be saved. I want them to understand what it means to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's important that we, those of us who have been invested with the mercy and grace of God, He has placed that message in this tool chest of our life that we not only preach the gospel, but we also take care of those natural needs. And as you're taking care of those natural needs, you'll find that there is a great place for the message to be placed in somebody's life. Somebody might say something, as we saw Ollie in the box. That was cute, Ollie. That was pretty awesome. And Ollie walking in a box, you know. But what I find that, and he had a green jacket on. Did you pick him because he had a green jacket? That just worked out perfectly, didn't it? That was pretty good. I wish we had that one on video. We can go around the world with that one. I, but I do think that every one of us sitting here today, that if we look at even, the, even what we're doing with these, these boxes, we're not just doing this so kids, they, they, yes, they will get nice little toys and stuff and they'll have somebody thinking of them but they're getting the gospel message see that's the package that's who we are we should be you know i remember one time i was thinking about this i was thinking about this sermon this friend of mine danny and myself we were going down the road and we saw this one particular guy had a blowout and if i just truly confess i don't think he's still alive today if i truly confess to you there are times i had a real struggle he was one of our builders and i had a real struggle with him because he felt like he owned us when we worked for him and we just worked for him but he was always better than us. And I always hated that. And so I was a sheet rocker, so he probably was better than us. But you find I was going down the road, he had a flat tire. Ah, oh, 
some of those days it was raining. He was in a nice stuff. He was better than us. <laughs> he was in his nice clothes going somewhere. And so I was like, we were in our 70s suburban work truck with, you know, we sprayed ceilings and had sheetrock stuff all over us. And it didn't matter whether we got wet or not. And so I can still remember this day. We jumped out of the truck like Richard Petty's pit crew. And so we always prided ourselves how quick we could do a, a change of tire and stuff. So we jumped out and waved at him, and he was sitting on the side of the road trying to think he was waiting on somebody to come change the tire, and so we showed up. And, uh, and so we jumped out and popped that tire on, da 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 and have a good day, see you, you know. But it was sometimes, you know, you think that's a struggle. But you know what? That means something to folks when you do something that goes beyond what your measure is. You know, and see, God wants to take this message that we have, and the reason why we do what we do sometimes is not just for those we do it for, but it's sometimes so we're reminded of how God was rich towards us when we were so poor. When we were in such great need, it was when he came to us. In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, it tells us that sometimes that we even minister to people like angels unaware. There are times that you'll do some things that you'll think, man, I don't even know why that was all about. But then you'll find, he says, sometimes we're ministering to angels even though we don't know it. In Romans, the 12th chapter, it tells us about these giftings that are placed in each one of our lives. And as I read through this and I see it, yes, these giftings are for the body of Christ. But hear me, folks, too often do we place all the giftings. And this is where I said when I was in the Pentecostal church, we all came to church to play with our giftings and never use them outside the building. If we had the gift of prophecy, we'd talk and prophesy to each other. If we had the gift of serving, we'd serve one another because you can see the instantaneous gratitude by somebody smiling. If you had the gift of generosity, we'd give to each other because there was no problem. I knew that person. I knew they weren't going to waste it. If we had all these giftings that you see listed there, we'd all come to church. And that's why I say play with our gifts, and then we'd never take them outside the building. And nobody knew we had these gifts. And so when I, what God is speaking, and I believe, to the church today, and it's not just about, and we, we did what was called the uh, uh, servant evangelism. When you go out and do the evangelistic stuff, and, and you actually do it, and you give them a card or something, that's an awesome thing to do. And we'll probably redo that at some point and start doing it again, and you'll find yourself in that, because I do believe it gives some of the greatest expressions of our gifting. For by the grace of God, is, I say to each one of you, this is in Romans the 12th chapter, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Think about a toolbox God has put you. He said, just as each one has one body with memory and members, these members do not all have the same function, don't have the same purpose. You're God's workmanship. You're God's tool chest. So in Christ Jesus, who are many, who are many form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. And brotherly love, honor your one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. The reason I read all that to you is that is the tool chest that's in the body of Christ. That's one of them. You'll find out also in Corinthians where it lists all these giftings that are there. Folks, my proposition to you today, if you are the tool chest of God, those giftings are there, not just so that we can have them here, not so we can just teach Sunday school, but you know, there are times that you're going to sit down and teach people that are outside of this body. There are times that you might use that gifting in other places, be an invitation of serving in other places. You'll find that that will open up the door so the message that God has placed in your life, if you use your tools properly, God has placed in your life that message that can be delivered to someone else. And you know what? It also is not a pry bar. It's just one of those things when you find yourself and you're helping someone out. There's, there are very few times I pick up hitchhikers. A few times that I have. I feel like I'm directed of God to do so. I don't tell any woman in here, don't pick up hitchhikers. Even guys, I don't know if you want to in this day and time. But there are a few times that I've gone past someone and God told me to turn around. And I remember one day in particular going down 119 here. And there's rain and cats and dogs and lightning and stuff. And the Lord said, turn around, go get him. And I thought I was going to take him to the end of 119. And I ended up taking him to Moody, <laughs> you know. But it was one of those days. But in the process of that, he didn't know Jesus. So I'm willing to go past 119, 280. Because it gives me an opportunity to go. And you say, well, that's very heroic. Well, look, I'm griping and complaining when I'm turning around. It was right in front of my house. I was almost home. God, no! He's like, no, I want you to do this. And I get the guy in the car, and he says, no, I don't know Jesus Christ. 
I wished I could tell you he accepted Jesus Christ before he got out of the car that day. And I said, look, I'm going to pray for you. He wasn't ready to. I said, I'm going to pray for you that you'll come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, the great thing is, and I was listening to Clay he, back here. He was talking about an opportunity he had just here recent. And um, Clay, why don't you come share that just, just real quick, if you would. This is impromptu, I know. But I think it's important we hear the giftings that God has placed in each one of us. We're a toolbox. You need to hear it happens everywhere we go. He was sharing this with me last week, and I thought it was really a neat experience. That's right there. She's, she's, Sherilyn's keeping the mic. She's being selfish with the mic. Well, it was um, last Friday night. I, I needed to get gas for the car, and I'd usually go to a BP station because I have a BP card, and I was... Um, I was thinking about try, you know, I have to figure out which ones have the right benefits and whatnot. So I was going to go to this one, but I got this little prompt and said, no, go over to this one. So I went over to this particular station and I started pumping and a gentleman and a guy, a, a guy and a girl in a car came up and said, hey, you know, I've, I've got to go to Gadsden or something and haven't got any money. And I've, I have been so ripped off by that. But I thought, well, okay. I'm not going to give you money, but I will give you some gas. So came on around, and, you know, I started putting gas in his car. And, and I said, you know, are, are you going to church anywhere? You know, I took, the, uh, took well, for all the prompting, you know, the, Jesus was talking to me saying, you know why he's here. So <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, you know, I started in, are you going to church? He mentioned some church I hadn't heard of. And I said, look, I just want to make sure you are right with Jesus. He goes, well, I'm trying. It's like, well, no, that ain't going to do it. You can't try. It's a free gift. He goes, okay, yes, sir. So that's how I left it. But, you know, it was a good opportunity. And by the time we ended through talking, I'd, you know, filled up his tank. So maybe he'll remember that, you know. Oh, well. Hey, that's the blessings of God, isn't it? That's awesome. This is what God is calling us to be is that tool chest that is his workmanship to do good works. It's not what saves you folks. And, and, and let, me, let me give you this too. As a pastor, I can tell you, one of the reasons I do that is to bring a God, smile to God's face. That brought a smile to God's face. It's not so that we feel good. It's not a do-gooder religion. It's that God, you have blessed me with your mercy and your grace. What can I do to give it to others? Use what he has put in us. Because he's made us those unique gifts. Now let me just share, the, I'm going to close with this story. Because I really believe we are God's workmanship. And, and we've been saved by his grace. If we are, then it is so natural. It is just so natural for this. And don't be afraid to let it flow. If you've got the gift of prophecy, God will speak to you sometime. And he'll say, just tell this person that. And you're going, they don't know them. So, it's not your gift, it's the gift of God. And you've got to act like it's God's gift and let him use you as your tool. As many unique tools Greg has, I, you know, the great thing about it is when he's got one you can use, it's great to have and to use it. And it's some unique things that happen. And that's what God wants you to know. You're uniquely made for his purposes. In Mark, the 14th chapter, this is when Jesus would be anointed at Bethany. You'll see also the story in John, the 12th chapter. I like this one because of the way it ends up. It was a natural progression of what was in someone's life. It says, Now the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking in some way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was at Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man named Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his, on his, on his head. Some of those present were indignant to the, one another, saying, what a waste of perfume. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And he rebuked them. Leave him alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing. The poor you'll always have with me, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured the perfume on my body beforehand, preparing me for burial. There's a big story behind this. But I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, she has done, will, will also be told in memory of her. When the gospel is being told, 
it'll be told in memory of her. Why? Because of one act of sheer gratitude that came out of her heart. And in the other gospel, it says that she was wiping his feet with her hair. There was a great humility. Now, folks, whatever we do, the good works, the servant evangelism we do, we do it out of gratitude. Just think of this, this what we see of Jesus being anointed. She took her best. She says, whatever it takes, we have been saved with God's mercy. It's not a begrudging thing he's asking us to do. It's not something that... I've got to go and evangelize because I feel so condemned when the preacher talks about evangelism and so I've got to go do that. No. We are God's workmanship created to do good works by His grace. That was an appreciation of the salvation she has experienced. That was out of a heart of gratitude. If we could see ourselves as that, I mean, my giftings, your giftings are just that tool chest God can use out of a heart of gratitude. If you really understand what salvation is, that means you have been saved now and the hereafter from all of all the destruction of hell and everything else. And we have been saved unto his glory. We've been saved by his mercy. She understood that. She didn't mind breaking that perfume bottle and anointing him out of just a gratitude of heart. And Jesus says, yeah, because he didn't get to be anointed and, and get prepared for his burial and his death and stuff. She was preparing him. But what was even greater than that, it was just out of a grateful heart. Folks, if I could do anything, I'd encourage you to understand the giftings God has given you, the grace he has given you for those giftings, the mercy you have experienced. And when we walk out of this place today or when you're walking anywhere you the next week, it should pour out of you like this lady. She couldn't help but do this. Nobody was forcing her to do it. Everybody wanted to second guess her. You shouldn't. Uh, I had people when I first got in the ministry. You shouldn't go in the ministry. You're too young. You ought to sow your wild oats first. No, no, no. Those wild oats come grow later. And what I have learned is that people will try to come up with a better idea. But folks, I'm telling you, if you've been saved by his mercy, you can't help but speak it. You can't help but take care of people. You can't help but do the things that you're called to do in your unique way to share his glory. To say, God, you're so awesome how you saved me. There's a lost and dying world waiting out there. I don't know. Maybe a cake could open a door to a message. Maybe a tool used in the right manner could open a door with a message. Yeah, we're called to do that. We're called to clothe the naked. We're called to feed those who are hungry. We're called to do that, and we're called to do it out of gratitude of heart because of what God has done for us. Not begrudgingly. But saying, yes, Lord, I will do it. I'm your tool chest. Use me. Use me. How you want, how you want me to do it? It may be through a phone call. It may be through a gas station, filling up a gas tank. But let them know why you're doing it. Let them know it's because of God's mercy and his richness towards you. Let me tell you about my Jesus. This world is lost and dying. Every day I get up and I look at the news and all the corruption, all the things, all the, everything... The salt and the preservation of any society is in the virtue, and the virtue is only going to be found in Christ Jesus. Let God use you as his tool chest. Out of a gratitude of heart, be used by God, by his grace. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you for the testimony of the lady that poured the perfume as she poured the perfume all over an anointing for his death for your death your death and i'm thankful father god that you have given us this mercy this grace let us not hold back any aspect of our lives let us be instant ready to give an account of that salvation you have given us and Father, I, I just I pray that nobody in here feels beat down or beat up because they might not be an evangelist, but everyone here can share the good news in their unique way. And so, Father, I pray that you'll just let us be your servants and we'll evangelize as we serve. Let your giftings in our life be known, not just in this building, but outside of this building. And Lord, I pray for the lost. I pray that you will use us to save the lost. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for your blessings. 
And we truly are blessed by you. As we close out this service, I just invite you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, the greatest thing you need to do is come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you already know him, let's recommit ourselves. Lord, use me, for I am created in your workmanship. I am your toolbox. Use me, Lord. Let's just make that commitment before him today, either first to Christ or secondly to just be his vessel of noble purpose in this day. Father, I pray as a church that you will give us your wisdom. Let us be used outside of this building so that when we come together to celebrate, it will be a celebration of what you're doing through your mercy and your grace in this land. Let this be that community church that can reach people and reach out to people like never before. And I just thank you for that privilege that you give us to be your witness. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, let your grace, your mercy, infill each person today. Let us realize that mercy was truly a gift only from you. And let it ooze out of us through our giftings. Let it ooze out through our personalities. And most of all, through our speech. And Father, may we glorify your name in everything we do and say. Let your grace, your mercy lead us, direct us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Glad you're here with us. Hook somebody's neck before you leave, though. They may need it, even if you don't.